So in this video, what we're looking at is increasing and decreasing functions. So we'll learn how derivatives can be used to classify relative extrema as either relative minima or relative maxima, okay? So first thing we have to do is define what an increasing and a decreasing function is. So straight away, we know intellectually that an increasing function is one that from left to right is rising, and one is decreasing if it is falling from left to right. But mathematically, what we're going to say is, and I still didn't change this. Let me fix this real quick. This should be greater than. So what we're saying is that for any two numbers, x1 and x2, if x2 is bigger than x1, so we're talking about here's x1, here's x2. If the y value associated with x1 is less than the y value associated with x2, then it's increasing. Okay, now if x1 is less than x2, once again, and uh, the y value associated with x1 is greater than the y value associated with x2, then we can see it's decreasing. Okay, so like I said, we know graphically that we can look at these and say, okay, this one is falling from left to right, therefore it's decreasing. This one is rising from left to right, so it's increasing. And if it stays the same over an interval, that means it's constant, okay? So in this situation, we know that from negative infinity all the way to this value at A, that it is decreasing. We know from this value at B to positive infinity, it's increasing. And from A to B, it's constant. Now I want you to look at this and think about what is the derivative of each of these things? Well, let's look at the derivative. Remember, the derivative is just the slope of the tangent line. What can I tell about all of these lines? They all have a negative slope, right? Which means that the derivative is less than zero. Now, what do I know about over here at this constant? Well, I know that a constant has a horizontal tangent right through it, so we know that the derivative is equal to zero anywhere that we have a constant interval. And then over here, we can see that all of these slopes are positive. Thus, the first derivative is greater than zero. So this is going to lead to something new. We're going to be able now to, uh, to show that because a positive derivative implies that a function is increasing, a negative derivative implies that the function is decreasing, and a zero derivative uh, implies that the function is constant, we can now say, if we take the derivative, if we know that there is a interval where f prime is greater than zero in that interval, then f is going to be increasing on that interval. If f prime is less than zero for all the x's in that, then f is decreasing on that interval. And if f prime is equal to zero for all the x's in that interval, then f is constant on the interval, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna look at this and we wanna find the open intervals on which this function, f of x equals x cubed minus three halves x squared is increasing or decreasing. So note, f is differentiable on the entire real number line, okay? And we can take the derivative and say that the derivative is 3x squared minus 3x. Now, the first thing we want to do when trying to determine where these uh, maximums and minimums are, I want you to think about logically, let's go back here and say, okay, if something is decreasing and then increasing, or if it's decreasing and then constant, and then increasing. What do I know about these endpoints? What's happening at the endpoint? What if this is, what if it was decreasing, it's increasing, and then decreasing, right? At all of those spots where we have a change, we have a relative maximum, relative minimum, or in the case of some kind of peak, we have it's non-differentiable. 
But at all these points, we have what? A critical number. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by finding the critical number of the function. So we're going to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So 3x squared minus 3x equals 0. We're going to factor out the 3x. Leaves us with x minus 1. So we know that because of this, we get x equals 0. This gives us x equals 1. There are critical numbers. Now, because there are no points where the derivative doesn't exist, we can conclude that these are the only critical numbers. So what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to, I'm not even going to use this. What I want to do is, I want you guys to think back to when we did rational inequalities. Uh, when we had rational functions and we had to uh, determine whether they were positive or negative on a certain interval, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to start by doing a number line. And we're going to use the critical numbers to create test intervals. So 0 and 1. But anytime we have two critical numbers, that gives us 1, 2, 3 intervals, right? Because we've got negative infinity this way. We've got positive infinity this way. So we have an interval from negative infinity to 0. We have an interval from 0 to 1. And we have an interval from 1 to infinity. Now, we know from our pre-cal that if one value in this interval is uh, fulfills the requirements, then all of them do. So if, if the value is positive over here for one test value, then the entire region would be positive. Same deal here. We can just pick a test point. So I need a number less than zero. Let me change color so we can know what we're talking about. Say negative one. A number between zero and one, we'll pick one half. And a number bigger than one, we'll pick two. So what we're going to do is we're looking for whether the derivative is positive or negative. So we're going to go back to our derivative. So what was the derivative that we had? Our derivative was 3x squared minus 3x. So 3x squared minus 3x. So we plug in negative 1. 3 times negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, we get 3 times 1, minus 3 times negative 1, which is plus 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. That's a positive number. That means we are increasing on this interval because the derivative is positive. Now, from 0 to 1, we pick 1 half. So 3 times 1 half squared minus 3 times 1 half. So that's 3 times 1 fourth minus 3 halves, or 3 fourths minus 3 halves, which is negative 3 halves. Is that right? No. 3 fourths minus 3 halves would be times 2 times 2. 6, yeah, negative 3 halves. No, negative 3 fourths. Aha. So that's negative, though, right? So that means that this interval is negative, which means we are decreasing on that interval. And if we plug into 3 times 2 squared is 4 minus 3 times 2, 12 minus 6 is 6. So once again, we get a positive region, which means we are increasing. So we can basically say that the interval from negative infinity to 0 is increasing. And the interval from negative 1 half, or from uh, 1, sorry, 1 to infinity is also increasing. So these are increasing. And we know that the area from 0 to 1 is decreasing. OK, now this shows us what we need to do, but here are the actual guidelines, OK? Step one, we want to locate the critical numbers. We're going to create test intervals using these critical numbers. Now, we need to determine the sign of the derivative at a test value inside of the intervals and then use theorem 3.5 to determine whether it's increasing or decreasing on each interval. And that's just by determining that sign, right? Now, these guidelines are also valid. It doesn't have to be from a, a, a specific point to a specific point. It can be from negative infinity to a point, from a point to positive infinity, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. So 
One last thing we want to talk about is something that's called monotonic. Something, a function that can be strictly monotonic, which means it's either uh, increasing completely on its uh, interval or it's decreasing completely on the interval. So notice here, there's going to be a critical number here. It's going to increase up to that critical number and then it's going to increase after the critical number. So if you ever do a uh, two test intervals and both of them are increasing, then that means you're looking at a strictly monotonic function. Or if they were both decreasing, then we would know that it was strictly monotonic. So if you have any questions about uh, increasing and decreasing functions, please shoot me a reminder or ask questions in class.